Hello, today's Bible study comes from Luke chapter 21, and we're going to go verses 5 through 19, and then tomorrow we'll finish the rest of the chapter. It reads as follows. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, <clears throat> as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they ask, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear the wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first. But the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, families and pestilence in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison. And you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist, and resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair on your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Well, Jesus starts talking about um, the time to come, the future of the destruction. And some of his disciples were remarking about how this physical temple that they saw looked, this building. And it had these stones that were beautiful and the gifts that were dedicated to God. And Jesus pretty much said, as for what you see here, it ain't going to last. There will come a time when none of them, none of the stones will be left on another. They ain't going to be on top of each other. And they will all be thrown down, meaning destroyed, meaning broken off of where they're at. And they say, because he's speaking of future times, teacher, they ask, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? So they, they ask Jesus, what is the certain time that these things will happen? Uh, they don't get to know the specific time. And they say, then, and what will be the sign that they are about to speak? And if you notice, Jesus tells them of things to happen, but he doesn't tell them of the time. He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. So when he says watch out, he means there are going to be things happening that will come that will deceive you. For many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. And he's not just talking about the demons. He's talking about the false prophets. He's talking to people that are telling you they can give you gifts of the Holy Spirit, which they can't because if you notice I said gifts of the Holy Spirit, it would have to come from the Holy Spirit. He's talking about having doubt. He's talking about you going to the wayside and not knowing his word and being able to follow his word. We should discern and know who Jesus is. We should know when somebody is not speaking the truth of the word to us. We should know because, one, Satan could never love us. So his actions and his people will never love us. Jesus is specific, and Satan has options. The Lord tells us what to do. Satan gives you options, and none of them are good. So he's telling you, keep your eyes open, because these type of things are going to happen. They may sound like me. 
They may look like me. Satan can be an angel of light, but he ain't me. Pay attention to what's coming. Because they're claiming to be me. And you should know me. Don't follow them. I'm I'm coming, but that ain't me. It is nice that you think enough to ask of what's going to happen. So, in Jesus' predictions, the, the disciples are just asking good questions that they should ask. And if you really want to see uh, who had it more labeled, Matthew had it, uh, I think, a little more detailed than and Matthew about this. But both of them speak of the coming destruction of Jerusalem and of the age of Jesus when he comes back and his glorious return. We must know God is coming back. We must have faith that Jesus is coming to judge. So we ask for these signs. And Jesus says, I'll give you some signs. And, and he starts it off with, watch out. That's a warning. Watch out. And after he goes through some of the signs, he says, when you hear of wars and uprisings, don't be frightened, believers, because these things must happen. So there's no need to be afraid because I'm telling you they must happen. And they must happen first. But the end will not come right away. There are some more trials and tribulations before the end. Then he said to them, nations will rise up against nation. That's war. And kingdom against kingdom. That's war. There will be great earthquakes. You go have these things. Famines and pestilences in various places. You're going to have these things. And we have them now. But it ain't the end yet. And fearful events and great signs from heaven. Now, here's another thing. When you hear people saying, I can tell you when the end is coming. In short, they're lying. They can't. If Jesus doesn't know the time nor day, and he's telling you of the fearful events, he didn't tell the disciples when it was going to happen. He just gave them things that are going to occur before this destruction. And then he goes on and he says, there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events, fearful events, and great signs from heaven. Then there's that but. But before all this, you're going to be taken hostage. They will seize you and persecute you. Uh-oh. So believers will be taken in. And you can be persecuted. You will. They will persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues. Woo. Woo. You got to think about that. The synagogues. Some of these synagogues got false prophets in them, leading them. And they will put you in prison. And you will be brought before kings and governors. Because they're going to be the ones going against the Lord. And, on all, and all on account of his name. His holy name. See, they, they never stopped being jealous of the Lord. They never stopped being angry when he was schooling them back then. And they're not going to stop being angry against him now because he's telling them you can't do it your way. And when I come back to judge you, there will be a punishment. And the main reason, 
they don't believe. If you don't believe in the Son of Man, you can't believe in God. He is the mediator. He is our high priest. He is the one that died on the cross and rose three days later so that you and I could have salvation and eternal life. So if you don't believe in him, I'm making sure you can't get to the Father. He's the mediator for a reason. And so you will bear testimony to me. Keep telling him who he is. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Do not, do not worry. He has protected you from day one. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Do you remember when um, John and Peter went before the Sanhedrin and they had to speak and they thought those country bumpkins didn't have knowledge? Gotcha. Holy Spirit intervened. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, sisters, relatives, and friends, and they will put you they will put some of your faith of you to death. Uh oh. So, my best relationship, it ain't with my parents. It ain't with my brothers. It ain't with my sisters, relatives, and friends. It's with the Lord. The best relationship you can ever have is with God. He is first, period. Everyone will hate you because of me. They hated him because of him. And what did he do? He loved on them, showed compassion, kindness, patience, and perseverance, cast out demons, miracles, works, fed them, anything you could think about. It was all love. And they hated Jesus because of his love. But not a hair on your head will perish. Uh oh. You mean you're going to protect me even to the last hair on my head? Hmm. And then it says, stand firm. Stand firm in short means be patient. Just be patient. Be patient and you will win your life. And what he's saying about this hair is not a hair in your head should be healed. Jesus is speaking that in the all end of it, in the eternal perspective, in eternity, not a hair of your head shall be lost. And this endurance ain't just a, a passive endurance. This is some strong endurance. You gotta you gotta believe and you gotta commit that. Even with what is going on at that time, be strong in your faith with Jesus. And to think that we would be hated for the sake of Jesus, you can see how people look at you if you even talk to them about Jesus right now. You can see how this world is acting toward Jesus right now. Why would you expect it to be any different? Man keeps getting miserable and more miserable. Until you turn to the Lord and accept him and humble yourselves, we will all be in that boat. We will all be in that boat. We have to turn to the Lord and accept Jesus Christ. So he's just talking about the future here, and he's breaking it down to his disciples. And tomorrow we will continue with the rest of this chapter. Amen. Have a blessed day.